Welcome back guys and in this episode I'm going to be focusing on showing you how to create your very first GraphQL schema within GraphQL Java. So as we're using GraphQL Spring Boot, GraphQL Spring Boot depends on GraphQL Java tools and GraphQL Java tools will allow us to write a GraphQL schema file or multiple schema files and will allow us to bring our own Java object so it'll match between the GraphQL schema that we write and the, the Java object. Now there are different ways of doing this, but in this episode I'll focus on the schema first approach. So if we go back to our code base, you may first wonder, well, where are the files going to be loaded from? And if you open up your application YAML, you'll see if you type in GraphQL, You'll see here there's a GraphQL tools schema location pattern property and you can see here that the GraphQL files will be loaded from anywhere on the class path or so anywhere we have from resources and you can derive here that it's multiple files so what we can actually do is split instead of having one massive schema file we can have many many different files and when the application starts, it's going to load all the different files, typically with like a single responsibility. Each file does kind of one or two things, usually one, but you can have many different types. And the GraphQL server will create the GraphQL schema from all of these files combined. So now we know where we have to put them in GraphQL resources. Let's create a directory and we'll call this GraphQL. And what we first want to do is create a GraphQL query file. So if we type query.graphqls, this file is going to define all of the queries available in our GraphQL server. So it's worth to note as well in the GraphQL server or the GraphQL files, if you comment on them as you're creating them, these comments will actually be used when we run tools like GraphQL Playground, Voyager, GraphIQL, and these comments will actually be available in the online documentation we generate. So it's a fantastic way to keep your documentation in sync with actual code that's, that's running. So I can go ahead here, just write some stupid comment server. And the first query we want to create is is bank account, so we want to retrieve, we want to get a bank account linked to an ID and we want to return a bank account. Now it's complaining because bank account does not exist. So one could go on and create the bank account type here, but we want to, to split this up into different uh, files, different GraphQL files. So let's create another folder and inside bank we're going to create, uh, this is where we're going to place all of our banking related types. So of course a bank account will have, uh, let's say, a name associated with it. So you can have name string and it's required, so exclamation mark. And the bank account will also have an ID, of course. So let's have an ID on this bank account. So it's, it's required as well. And the bank account, let's say, has a currency. So we create a custom currency enum for this. And to create this currency, we'll go ahead and create another file called GraphQLS. And inside this, we're going to create sorry, an enum type. And we'll have a few different Sorry for my crazy fingers. I have a few different currencies. So USD and uh, Swiss, Swiss francs. So we can go ahead and look and everything should compile fine. And now you've created your very first GraphQL schema. Now, what we want to do is if we try and run the application, this will fail because it doesn't have the, the Java objects required. Or actually, we don't have a, we don't have our very first um, resolver, so it won't fail. But what we can do here, first of all, is go ahead and create 
our resolver. So inside here, we want to have a resolver package. And inside here, we want to create a resolver that will serve the requests from this bank account. So if we go ahead and we call it bank account resolver, and we mark it with a component. So the Spring server is going to recognize that. And what we need to do is we need to implement um, our query resolver, GraphQL query resolver, and that's going to, to match it. There's a GraphQL resolver and there's a GraphQL query resolver. So if I type in this, there should be GraphQL. There's the query resolver and the resolver. And the difference is if it's from a root query, then you want to use the GraphQL query resolver. So if you're querying from this level, you need a GraphQL query resolver. And if you want to resolve nested elements within a query resolver, then you use the GraphQL resolver. But I'll demonstrate all of this in the upcoming um, demos. So inside here, we have to actually match to this query. So how we do that is we can copy the name of the query. And inside here, let's just simply return or create a method that returns a bank account and accepts in a UUID as the ID. And we'll need to return a bank account. So here, let's go and create a bank account. So let's create the main package. And let's say, okay, bank. And then inside here, we want a bank account. And then here, we're going to use Lombok. So we say value. And what we want to do is we want it to match the bank account. So we need an ID, a name, and a currency. So UID, ID, string name, and we need a currency. And here we need to go ahead and create a currency, which is of an enum type. And of course, it should match CHF and US dollars. So that should be it. And here we need to return a new bank account. So I'll bring in a logger. Log.info. Retrieve a new bank account. ID. Return your bank account. And that kind of is going to look messy. So let's go ahead and use a builder because there's too many parameters in the constructor. It's not that nice. So I say builder dot, and we'll have an ID. Let's actually set that to the ID coming in. And then we'll have a currency of USD and the name. Let's just set it to Philip. Build. So now we have our first resolver, which should resolve the bank account. So go ahead and run this. But before we run it, you might be thinking, well, actually, how to see it? And if we want to actually see the and query this in a nice way, instead of using Postman or something else, we want to use what's called GraphQL Playground. So if we come here and we go back to this GraphQL Spring Boot, we'll have to grab GraphQL Playground. So there should be the palm somewhere. So let's bring that in here. So GraphQL Playground, Playground Spring Boot Starter, the same version as GraphQL. Let's refresh the dependency, so it's here now, and then go ahead and run the application. So hopefully this should work.
We'll, we'll make our very first query. So there we go. It's running on port 8080. So if we come back, let's refresh, see the playground. And inside the schema, we can see the schema here. We can see we have a bank account, a currency, a query. And if we want to go to the docs, of course, we don't have any docs because we I didn't um, comment on it, but at least we can make a query. So if we come here and we write bank account, and we need to get a random UID. So I agree. So we copy a UID. Let's go back to playground. Let's paste that in. And here we want the ID, the name, and the currency. Let's fetch that. And there we go. Our GraphQL server has responded with that. And if we don't want the name, we just want, if we don't want the ID and name, we can drop that off. Yeah, and just write currency. And it just gives us what we want. So it's a very quick tip. On how to or how to get your GraphQL server running, the very very basics. If we want to annotate that, then or we want to have some comments, and we can have supported currencies. We can restart the server, and that comment should now be reflected in the documentation here. So if I refresh this, docs, bank account, currency. You'll see now it says here supported currencies. So thank you very much for watching this episode. And I will see you in the next episode for more good practice schema design. Thank you very much and goodbye.